politics. We say that word, and, and I think a negative connotation comes to mind. And the idea right now is like poison to most people out there, I think. But we do like the idea of good policy. We do like the idea of people who truly do want to serve. And with us this morning is a lady who has talked about that extensively. And, in fact, um, has some very interesting points on it to be made in books that she has written. Her name is Mary Jane McKittrick. She's a founder of Pets Teach Us. Uh, she's a former news anchor and reporter. And she looks at the politicians and politics in general through the eyes of animals. And we welcome Mary Jane McKittrick to the show this morning. Mary Jane, an honor to have you on the show. Good morning to you. Good morning, Gary. Nice to be with you. I was looking at uh, some of the information about you. And, you know, there, there was a point that was made. It says you don't need another poll to know that most Americans are fed up with the process and the people occupying those government jobs. The problem is everybody's getting so critical of politicians that the number of votes being cast is down dramatically. And I think it looks like in here, from what I can read, that you're worried that people are, are not caring anymore about the process around them, which does affect them in the long run, right? Right, absolutely. I mean, as you already said, I spent many years as a news reporter and anchor, and I have interviewed and reported on a lot of politicians. But the thing that I found interesting, and this is the nugget I took away to write the book, was that when your cameras are off and the crowds have dispersed, and you ask them... Why did you get into politics in the first place? Almost to a person, they say, because I wanted to make a difference. Yep. I wanted to, you know, to help the schools, help the water supply, do something with taxes, whatever their cause. So they really had service on the mind. And that's the nugget I took away. Because in my project, which is uh, Pets Teach Us, right. the whole point is, Animals often bring us to our best selves. And they teach us what matters most in life. And so the children's portion of that project are my books called Boomer and Haley, which feature an Australian shepherd, Boomerang, and his sidekick, Haley's Comet, A Silver Streak of a Cat. And in our Election Day book, that's what I was trying to capture for children. Because when you boil it right down, when kids learn to be of service within their family, helping around the house, helping the neighbor maybe, learning to clean up their own room voluntarily. That seed person who may grow up to be the person who helps clean up the tornado ravaged town or the oil spill. So it's an incredibly wonderful life lesson that we can teach very early. You know, you, you have a number of embedded kinds of messages that I think that you put into your, your stories here. And right. and I that was one of those embedded messages, obviously, that you just mentioned. What are some of the other ones that you want kids to take away, but more important, maybe even parents to take away from this as well, well as they share with their kids? Absolutely. The Boomer and Haley ser uh, series, although it's aimed at 48-year-olds, is really for adults as well. Right. And um, that's why it won the Election Day book, won your Mom's Choice Award. Because in that book, we talk, the four embedded lessons are pet care, which is learning to take care of a pet, sometimes our first brush with parenting, forgiveness, honesty, and take responsibility. So in that story, uh, the dog and cat, by the way, are adopted by two people, Harold and Edna Sanders, who've never been parents. So now they have to learn to parent these two wayward, four-legged creatures. And in the town of Shady Pines, where they live, the mayor, Beauregard Fibbs, <laughs> um, well, he's kind of like having a hard time with the truth, much like many politicians we know. Right. And, you know, he's driving around in a new car. He's got new office furniture. But the town is showing all kinds of signs of decay. The paint is cheap, chipping off, the potholes, so on. So they have a town meeting, and they say, what should we do? And Edna Sanders, mother of the two animals, asks a question. Before she knows it, she's drafted to run on the common sense party ticket against the mayor's gimme. <laughs> gimme this, gimme that party. <laughs> And so the kids get to watch an actual election in process in their little town, led by the dog and cat. And adults get to see what happens when the children see what goes on. And as you read along, <clears throat> and the story unfolds, we don't have any villains. The, the mayor finally falls on his sword during a debate, admits his wrongdoing. And so we learn forgiveness. But the, and he's not the only one needing to take responsibility. Because in actuality, all these townsfolk elected him, and then they stopped paying attention to what he was doing. So in the end, they all clean up their own mess together. 
You know, so it, that's kind of the adult side of this. Yeah. That it's okay to complain, and every time we have a crisis, we all go wild. Oh, how could this happen? How could this happen? Right. But in, in reality, we're all watching the Kardashian wedding. <laughs> Not I. I, I have to, to say, admit, I, 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 the I miss... tabloid side takes over yeah. and grabs our attention, and we don't really pay attention very much until it blows up in front of us. Those are lessons that are really important for us to learn right now, and, I, and a lot of people are complaining. You know, the the whole political atmosphere is toxic, I think, in the country right now, and, and we're tired of hearing about it every day. People say to me, man, you must really like politics. I said, I hate politics. I, I like when I see people doing good public service, but I think... One of our jobs is to figure out a way to kind of get back to we the people are supposed to be the government. And it looks like you tackle that pretty well here uh, through the simplicity of animals and, and through the simplicity of people interacting in this story. And I like that. I mean, I, I think we tend to complicate simplicity sometimes uh, because we don't particularly like the the answers that simplicity holds for us. And so we go out there and we, we construct gray areas that we can kind of wander into. And I, you know, your story here uh, and, and the bits that I've read of it so far takes on straight on truth a bit and, right. and how people can, can serve by serving themselves and serving responsibility. Exactly. Because after all, what it all comes down to is relationships. Yeah. And often our earliest relationships and our, or our most compassionate, loving relationships are with the family animal, whether it's a, a kitten or a puppy or something. Our earliest memories of having to pay attention to someone else's needs, taking care of them, loving them, being sometimes, you know, uh, having to take care of them at times when we didn't want to. That's responsibility. And you then transfer those, and there are lots of polls that will show this to you, that kids who learn that in a loving environment transfer those skills to their other relationships. So it starts in the family. It then goes to schools and workplaces, community, and beyond. And after all, that's a grassroots m movement I think we can all get behind. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we, My wife and I have two cats at home, uh -huh. uh, Duffer and Princess. And they are like uh -huh. brother and sister, but right. one of the things you know, and I could hear, I could hear guys. We have a lot of guys listen to our program. I hear guys going, "Oh, come on, man, this is it. no." But but really, uh, one of the things we do at nighttime is I'll sit down on the edge of the bed, usually before my wife even comes upstairs, and we have treats time. And what I do is I just shake the bag. Now the one is is waiting for me at the top of the steps, letting me know that it's time or past time. Many times, the other one kind of wants to always be fashionably late to the party right. and comes up late. That's the guy. Uh, the the girl's always there first, which uh -huh. is which is pretty much symptomatic of life. Women usually, I think, are on time. We guys, you know, we you know we we show up a little bit different. Now I might get in trouble with that. But anyway, uh -huh. uh, one of the things that happens inevitably is the one is waiting, 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 waiting. For the treats, and the other one knows that I'm going to wait till he gets there, and both of them are up there. And I tell the one, I said, "You got to wait for Duffer. Where's Duffer?" And she'll turn around, and look over her shoulder, like, you know, where is he? I'm. I'm... So it's interesting. You tr you kind of treat them the same way, and you say, "Okay, we have certain rules here. We got to have to kind of abide by." Right. And 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 yet we look at society right now, and we're having a difficult time. And the the one worry that I have, Mary Jane, is. Your stories are simple in terms of their honesty, but when people go to Washington, and I've heard a lot of the same kind of people you have, and I know a number of people in Washington who say, I'm going there to serve. Well, some go there to serve themselves, and, and that's not good, and others go there to serve, but they get caught up in a whole different game that is different from uh, what we see each day, the, the easy rules, where we say, well, here's right, here's wrong, and they get there and say, well, not necessarily. How, you know, how do you rectify the two of those, or do you even try to rectify the two of those? I don't. I really don't try because I'll tell you what I've also learned is that politics are everywhere. Yeah, they are. I mean, that we focus on Washington, we focus on our state capitals, and blah blah blah. But there are politics in their own house. Right. There are negotiations that go on every day. What movie? What time is dinner? Who's going to make it? Who's doing this? Who's doing that? Who's picking up the kids? There are negotiations at the workplace. There are. There are politics everywhere in our lives. So my point is, you have to learn how to negotiate, compromise, not always confrontate. Okay. And that is the lesson that I'm trying to put out there, because you're right. Anybody can be corrupted. I mean, 
you can be of service and go up the ladder of an organization or a corporation and think you're doing great work, and then somebody throws you a bonus and says, eh, look the other way. Yeah. Or, or I, where, where did I lose my morals and my ethics I, along the way there? <laughs> I, I, somebody misplaced the baggage and flew it to another place. Um, That's what, that was the fun of writing that book, um, Boomer and Haley Election Day, because the mayor grew up in that town. He was one of them. And he had all these good intentions, and he was doing fine. But then he saw it was easy to take a little bit of tax money. Yeah. Nobody was noticing. Nobody was noticing, right? He wasn't a bad guy, but he did a bad thing. And so they slapped him back and said, that's not how we do it here in Shady Pines. <laughs> he had groups around him. So, again, you're right. The whole idea of the children's section of Pets Teach Us is to tell kids, surround yourself with people who are trying to do the right thing because you'll have a better shot at actually achieving those goals in the right way. We're talking with Barry J. McKittrick, founder of Pets Teach Us and uh, the whole Boomer and Haley series. And, you know, I, the the only thing that I that I that I hear that I would probably I will say mildly disagree with you on is this. Mm -hmm. I think we do have liars, and I think we do have bad people uh, oh, sometimes. Do. And and I and so you know when I you're sitting there talking about the mayor to me, I'm saying hey, that guy's a crook. And he he lied. He's a crook. He steals. And 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 you said he's not a bad guy. And I haven't read the book, so in fairness, I'm I'm, I'm saying this to totally in a vacuum. But there are bad people around today. Do we tell our kids? You know, these are bad people. They're out there not telling the truth. And you're going to come across them during your lifetime. You're going to have to deal with these people. Oh, and, yeah. And you're, and you're teaching them to deal with them in a positive way. And I appreciate that. But by the same token, some of them don't deserve to be dealt with in a positive way. They deserve to be okay. locked up and throw away the key. <laughs> No, that'll be the, the next book. This okay. is the four to eight year olds. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can't get that sophisticated with the four to eight year olds yet. But, Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> that's, that's the next level up. But you're right. No, you're absolutely right. I don't mean to, to come at it as a Pollyanna, trust me. But what I'm helping that group with is that. Now, in the Pets Teach Us project, we deal with a lot more adults. For instance, right. that is a collection of stories of people telling me what life lessons they've learned from their animals. Right. In fact, one man was great. He he said, I didn't even know I was off the track until my my wife said, have you noticed how the dog is cowering? He yeah. went, what? Well, he'd been downsized right out of his job. So all of a sudden, he's not getting up at the same time. He's scared. He doesn't know what his next move is going to be. He's frustrated. He's angry. His tone had changed. And the dog was completely unnerved. Wow. And he, and he looked at me and said, Jane, I had no clue. The dog was a reflection of what I was going through, and I had to change me. And you know what? You know, he started a part-time job. It's turned into a full-time. He's turned things around. But it was the dog who taught the family, we're in trouble here. But you really have to be tuned into that, I think. And, you know, because a lot of times we just say, well, it's a dog or it's a cat or whatever pet it might yeah. be. And and yet, if you're if you're sensitive, which obviously he is uh, to this uh, or became sensitive to it over a period of time, all of a sudden you're ready to learn something. And, you know, we have to be receptive to learning something before that ever is going to happen. Right. That's the point. All of these stories, that's where I turn it on a dime. Instead of, I don't do with the stories that say, oh, I went out and I adopted this cute puppy. And I did this. Yeah. And I did that. That's great. I love that. But right. now, what are you learning? What are you finding out? Of, what is your aha moment that you're learning from this relationship, which is so integral to your life? One lady told me that the cat next door all of a sudden leaped into her arms one day. So Suzanne takes this cat home. And later finds out the neighbors were about to move to a new city. The cat didn't want to leave the neighborhood. She liked Suzanne. Wow. I, I said, Suzanne, what did you learn? She said, I learned I have to push beyond my boundaries and start accepting new challenges. I have to take some risks. I'm very closed off a lot of the time. Interesting. I, I, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more. I want to talk about your aha moment when you decided okay. that animals would be your best way to translate for people what some of their own shortcomings and uh, dreams might be. We're going to come back with Mary J. McKittrick here on the Gary Sutton Show. Very interesting interview on News Radio 910 WSBA. Welcome back to the Gary Sutton Show on WSBA. Our special guest this morning, Mary J. McKittrick, founder of Pets Teach Us. She's a former news anchor and reporter and author, um, founder of the Pets Teach Us Project, and the Mom's Choice award-winning author of the Boomer and Haley series, and has found a new way to take on uh, the mess in D.C. and the mess in 
politics by uh, talking about, uh, you know, pets and looking at yeah. it through the eyes of pets and being receptive to that. What was your aha moment where you came up with this idea? Because I think it's really intriguing here, Mary Jane. Oh, thanks, Gary. Well, I I think the the moment it hit me was I was living on a horse farm here in North Carolina. Okay. And I was going through a, a very bitter divorce at the time, so I was very down. And I was rehabilitating two show horses that had a tough time. I had a couple of stray cats and a foster dog. And all of a sudden it hit me that the real story was all around me. All of us were healing together. We all wow. were learning lessons from one another because of our different circumstances. And the way back to light and joy was to build ourselves back up. And I thought, my gosh, if I'm going through this, think of how many people are in a dark place right now and can use that kind of guidance. And I'm, I have these wonderful mentors all around me. And, it, and then it hit me when I was riding one of those horses who had an especially difficult, almost black beauty background. And a couple of women had come to visit the farm. And I'm riding this beautifully rehabilitated horse. She's absolutely poetry in motion. And I'm talking about her backstory and how she was abused, right. and how horribly she was treated, and blah, blah, blah. And the women started crying. And I said, what? And she, they both, in their own lives, had been through abuse or something horrible. And this story brought it out, and they could finally talk about it. And I said, that's, that's, my, that's my path. You know what? If I can be a service of that, I'll do that. You know what has touched me in what you've said about like the Boomer and Haley series and, and some of the things you've done with, with animals and, and looking at life a little bit through the eyes of animals or at least feeling and and being receptive to to some of the lessons maybe they have to teach. I asked yeah, you a little but, bit, I asked you a little bit about go uh, about politics and, and you talked about uh, the idea of the Shady Pines uh, story here and how the townsfolk have to work together to solve their problems. And I said, well, you know, we, we really have to look at some of these people just as liars and so forth. But but it occurred to me, as you gave your answer, that one of the things you're calling us to do in these stories is to control that which we can control, to, to exercise right. service on that which we can do. And right. if we do that enough, maybe, just maybe, one of the byproducts of that, the outgrowth of that, and I'm probably being a little dreamy-like when I say this, but anyway, could be that, uh, you know, people will be better. People will react better. People will become more receptive. People will compromise more. People will still have principles when they get there and, and keep them while they're there in places like D.C. Well, that's the whole idea, is that... C kindness and compassion, I thought were kind of throwaway words until I started, you know, got older and realized these are bedrock <laughs> and we're yeah. losing them. We're losing this word called integrity, the way you behave when no one's watching and how important that is and how important that is to live it, try to role model it for others, for your friends, your family, whomever. It's core. And believe me, the ones who will catch you at it, if you're not in your right self, are the animals, because all they live on is the energy and your, your nonverbal, your body, and they will pick it up and reflect it back to you, and you can go, oh, man, I am off. I didn't realize I was off, but I'm off. You know, it's interesting what I, uh, I get home today. Uh, my, the male cat, Duffer, will come to the door, and uh -huh. he, will, he will talk to me, and he has like four or five different sounds that, that he right. makes, and he has one where he opens his mouth, and there's no sound that comes out. I'm not sure. I've never been able to figure out what all this means yet. I'm trying to, uh, because they all kind of sound the same many times, although he has this like this purr sound, and he sits at the window. He likes to sit at the back porch and look out the screen and make these little chipmunk-type sounds with the animals outside, so I don't understand, but it is intriguing my wife and I will many times say, we wonder what he's thinking right now. What's, what's he trying to tell us? What's he saying? We really do say that sometimes because he has so many, he really has a character to him. Um, so, you know, we're trying to be receptive to that. And yet at the same time, it's so hard to understand all the little different languages. It's got to be frustrating to them when we don't understand that sometimes. Well, but, but you want, if you really start paying attention, you'll find how well you're trained. Because pretty <laughs> yes. soon, you know, they tell you when they want you up. My cats jump on top of me. They'll tell you when they want to eat. That in that case, he's he's hunting. That's a hunting. That little sound is a hunting sound. Yeah. He's trying to say, "There's prey out there. Do you see them? Do you see them?" <laughs> right. Although I he's... mean, they they are very much in tune, and they want you to understand what's going on. And sometimes you just don't. Yeah, I'm like the village <laughs> idiot sometimes, and I admit it. But th there you go. Where can people get the the series here, Mary Jane? You can go to my website at petsteachus one word dot com. 
In fact, there's even a wonderful free download of the thing, five things that our pets teach us so they can download and have fun with that. And all kinds of stories are there on the website of people who have shared their stories. I've interviewed them or they've sent them in. And we encourage you to read those, learn something from the people who are talking about them, and also submit a story of your own if you'd like. We're happy to hear those, too. Mary Jane, this is one of, been one of the more intriguing uh, political interviews I've ever done with anyone. And I really appreciate your take on this whole thing. Thank you very much for coming at it in kind of a unique way. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate their time. Thank you. Mary Jane McKittrick with us here this morning on the Gary Sutton Show. Again, you can go to PetsTeachUs.com to find out more or to purchase the book. Mary Jane, have a great day. You too, Gary. Take Bye-bye. care. Wow. It's a different way of looking at it, right? And we're all thinking about our individual pets as we were going through it there, weren't we, and how they communicate with us, how we try to communicate with them.